In part one of this Homeless in Japan series, we met Professor Gill, who explained how Japan's homeless differentiate from North America's. In this video, we'll explore who the homeless are and how they came to live where they do. Just a quick note though, this video will mainly cover what it was like around the turn of the century, and that the situation and attitudes have improved in more recent times. There are three major homeless areas in Japan, and our story starts in Sanya, located in the city of Tokyo. Now, Sanya is called a doyagai, which literally means a flop house town. And quite a few large Japanese cities have districts like this. Uh, they're virtually male only slum districts, in which traditionally men would rent a cheap room, a very primitive, small, room uh, in a doya. That uh, comes from the Japanese word yado, meaning uh, an inn, a place to stay, and it's turned around doya, uh, uh, in other words, a low-grade place to stay. Uh, it's a bit of ancient street slang. When Japan's homeless problem started to emerge, it was closely connected with these places, because in the old days, if you lost your job, um, or your wife kicked you out of the house and you didn't have any money uh, and no particular prospects, at least you could go to a doya guy where you could get a cheap room uh, and you could get casual work. And the added advantage was that at doya you don't have to give proof of identity or have a guarantor or anything like that. No questions asked, you just hand over the cash. So after the bubble economy bursts, or in Japanese uh, land prices and stock prices collapsed at the beginning of the 1990s, the construction industry in Japan, which would by then was by far the biggest employer of these day laborers, uh, greatly contracted, a lot of people were laid off, and companies stopped employing day labourers. And so a lot of these guys who had been somehow eking out a housed existence in these doyagai districts ended up on the streets. The homeless population in Japan is almost entirely male. Uh, it's very rare to find a female homeless person in Japan. Uh, of course there are some, but most surveys suggest that 98, 99% of homeless people are men. Um, most of them are elderly. Probably the average age is in one's 50s. They tend to have low levels of education. Um, many of them left school after junior high or senior high school. Um, of course, you find a few college-educated homeless people. And another interesting thing that I've noticed is that they tend to have rural backgrounds. Perhaps in one's teens or early 20s, moving to the big city um, because there was not enough work in the country. Or sometimes it would be seasonal, like you'd go in the winter when there was not much work to do in agriculture. And these guys ended up being day labourers, living in doyagai, uh, and some of them eventually became homeless. I'd guess maybe 20 or 30 percent of the homeless population have, have got some kind of criminal record. And if you have a criminal record, uh, it's much more difficult to get a job. It's particularly difficult if you're a former Yakuza. If you go for a job interview and you're missing one or two ends of fingers, uh, that's going to count pretty heavily against you, or if you've got a tattoo. Another issue is having debt. You've heard of Sarakin. It's short for salaryman kinyu, which means salaryman financing. Uh, it's a, another Japanese slang word, which refers to loan sharks, and they charge very high rates of interest. If you do get in debt to a Sarakin, and you fail to keep up the repayments, they can make life very unpleasant for you. They have debt collectors called toritate in Japanese. They will come to your house, knock on your door, um, tell your wife about your debt. They may even shout through a megaphone the fact that you, you're a deadbeat who's not repaying your loan. And they, they can humiliate you in ways like that. And so that is one of the reasons why some people become homeless. They're running away 
from loan sharks. And it's also one of the reasons why people may not go into homeless shelters or not apply for livelihood protection. Because th when you get into these bureaucratic systems, you have to register, you have to give your name and, and place of origin and so on. And the moment you do that, it gets easier for the loan sharks to find you. Most debts have a sort of statute of limitations. I think if the loan shark has not contacted you for five years, the loan lapses. Uh, so that's another reason why some guys are kind of um, uh, playing out time while they're homeless, waiting for their debts to expire. Professor Gill told me that in recent times, the government has enacted laws to curb loan sharks. So the problem is not as pronounced as it used to be. Some nonprofit agencies also provide lawyers to help people in debt. Although Professor Gill did mention there's shame attached to going bankrupt and that the rates in Japan are lower than in the U.S. Looking at bankruptcy rates between Japan and the U.S. show that U.S.'s personal bankruptcy rate is three and a half times that of Japan's. Now, if you're like me, the big question you might have at this point is what is the Japanese government doing to help the homeless? You may also be wondering why there are so many homeless men and so few homeless women. Well, the government has a couple laws in place to help the poor and homeless, which we'll discuss in the next video. But for now, I'll let Professor Gill tell you about why when homelessness became a concern a couple decades ago, women didn't face the same issues that men did. If you're an old-fashioned, somewhat sexist government official, then the idea of a homeless woman is pretty shocking because women are not supposed to be independent and look after themselves. They're supposed to be looked after uh, by their parents when they're young, by their husbands after they get married, and by their children when they become, a, uh, become an old lady. If one of them becomes homeless, uh, she won't usually be blamed for it. Uh, imagine the same situation, a homeless person uh, coming to a welfare office and asking for help. If it's a woman, they'll be shocked. Uh, and if she's got children, they'll be even more shocked. Uh, uh, the, you can't have children on the street. Um, and so they will try and do something for her. Whereas if it's a, a single male, um, they may think, oh, he's been drinking too much, why doesn't he get a job? And the, 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 the idea that a man is supposed to be independent and look after himself, uh, and probably a family as well, and a woman is not expected to be independent, that sexist idea happens to work in the favour of women in this particular context. Another reason is that there, there are a couple of other branches of the welfare system that cater specifically for women. There are special shelters for domestic violence victims. And also, Japanese cities have public housing earmarked for single-parent families, about 90% of which are mother-only families. There are non-profit organizations working to aid the poor and homeless, like Sanyukai, located in Sanya. I'll leave the last word to one of the directors, Kazunori Yui. を多分彼らの大きなあの課題というか問題だなと思っていて、ま自分なんてもうどうなってもいいんだというか誰にも必要とされてないんだっていうふうに思ってしまって、ま生活を追っている制度があったり、いろんな支援の制度があったり、我々み